it's Lauren Jackson from Kids Ministry Circle, and we are here in Southern California, and I thought it would be fun to introduce you to Erica. We met because she was in the Kids Ministry Circle Spring Cohort, and we are here, and we're gonna look at her space. So she's in a fun, unique space that is shared by many, and so she is going to share a little bit about her church and how they use this space as a set up and tear down for their church. So Erica, tell us a little bit about your church. Uh, we are Redemption Church here in Coast Mesa, California. Um, we have always been a set up tear down church. Um, we've had a couple different spaces where we've done that in. We um, for years set up and tear down in the senior center here in Costa Mesa. During COVID we set up and tear down in a parking lot as I'm sure many people did. Um, and now we get to um, be in this beautiful field work space that's a co-working space, an event space, any kind of space you could imagine it to be. Um, and we are it's an honor to get to be here and do this together. All right, let's go take a look at her space. Here we are at the kids ministry entryway. There's a little peek of my family. This is actually my sister's church, so the space tour was a family affair. These two big sliding doors are open throughout the week for the co-working space to utilize, but they are closed and locked during church on Sunday morning. The check-in table gets placed right in the middle for families to check in their kids and head down to their classrooms. It's an added bonus that these sliding doors are beautiful because they make a great backdrop for check-in. There are two hallways in this building. One is for elementary kids and the other side of the hallway is for nursery to preschool. It's really nice that these hallways have glass windows. Sometimes when you're in a rented space or a setup and tear down situation, you have to think really hard about how to create safe environments. What's nice about these glass doors and windows is that you can always peek inside. And so the classrooms remain safe as volunteers and kids are playing and learning together. Here is a before of the elementary small group room. It is a typical conference room. Erica and her team at Redemption Kids are super grateful that they are able to use those white cabinets you see as storage for weekly supplies like crayons, markers, paper, scissors, and first aid kits. Here are a few things I love about this space. First is the classroom signs hanging in the windows. When you are limited on what you can hang, those suction clips are a great solution. Second, I love how simple the classroom is set up. They have only what they need for the day. That really helps with setup and tear down and helps your volunteers stay on track with the plans for the day. When you are a setup and tear down mobile church, it's important that you stay small. You only have the supplies that you need and that you don't keep adding things week after week to your bucket of supplies so it turns into this big chaotic mess that's hard for your volunteers to manage. It's important to stay organized and continue to clean out those buckets week after week. All right, so here we are in one of the classrooms. So Erica, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you use this space for and how you transform it on Sunday mornings. Yeah, so this space is used for our elementary classroom. So kindergarten through fifth grade is in here. Have no fear, not all those kids are in here the whole time. Half the class breaks off and goes outside for a little bit. Oh, I was um, gonna ask you, how many kids do you have? Yeah, that would be like 35 kids in here, which is a little too much, but the, half of them go outside. Um, Cause why not be outside? We're in Southern California. I know, that's a perk. Um, so, all these tables and chairs are gone on a Sunday morning and we bring in some folding tables and folding chairs and set those up for the kids. 
and one we make, there's normally a folding table right here, and we make that our craft table. And then the other one is sort of like a game table. And then when one class breaks off and goes outside, we push the tables together and the other class sits around the table and that's where we do our lesson. They draw on the whiteboard, we do activities up there. They make thankful circles every day. So they, um, we take the thankful cards that they make and we put them up on the board so they can see everything that they're thankful for. That's how we start every class. And that's so, so cute. Try to utilize this as much as we can for like drawings, lessons, games, thankfulness, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So how long does it take you to set up interior dawn on Sundays? Okay, so the gift is that this stuff, when I get here, is already gone. So that's oh, kind that's of a nice. gift for me, is that the field work space, their employees clear that space for me. So when I'm setting up the four different rooms and check-in, it takes about an hour to an hour and a half. That's me lollygagging and chatting with right. people and like having fun as well, <laughs> but about an hour to an hour and a half. Yeah, that's so. awesome. And then fun fact, Erica told me that there's another church that meets after you guys yeah. meet. And so what stuff do you share? So we share in one of our classrooms, we have, in our preschool classroom, we have tables and like little kid tables and chairs set up and some rugs. That classroom stays set up. So I don't have to tear that down, which is a huge gift. Um, this classroom, we completely tear it down. Um, and then we share all the like step stools and changing tables and all that kind of stuff in the bathrooms and, and the check-in table as well. So it's That's really awesome. only two rooms that I have to tear down incredible yeah that is such a fun I think that's just a unique way of thinking about church like a uh, two churches using the same building that's not initially created for a church which yeah. I think is really fun and unique and how you've adapted these classrooms to work for kids and I just think that's really special yeah it makes me think of I've been thinking about this a lot recently the the verse where it says uh, they'll know you're my di disciples by the way you love one another. Mm -hmm. I think about that a lot in the way that our two churches interact and totally. like share things that like, oh, the other people that utilize this space will know that we are his disciples by the way that these two churches who maybe think things a little bit differently mm -hmm. use this space and share it and engage with each other. Yeah, so that's awesome. Um, that's awesome. Here we are in the toddler and preschool classrooms. Again, this looks like a typical conference room you would find in an office building. And it's true that you don't need much to create a great environment. And we already heard from Erica that she has an incredible relationship with the co-working space and they are able to tear down these conference tables for them and the other church to use on the weekend. What's nice about this space is that her team sets up these small tables, a few colorful rugs, a few toys placed around the room to create stations, and that is perfect for welcoming kids into the classroom. What I love about this room is that the tables are bright and bold colors. You see the majority of these conference rooms are white, and that can be a little boring but she was able to add color with those tables and rugs that truly create it into a kid's classroom. When you can't paint a wall, colorful furniture can really bring a classroom to life. All right, here we are. We are inside the field work offices. This is their like event space, but this is what they call their gathering center on Sunday mornings. And so Erica, as a setup and teardown church, what are some of the hardest things about being a part of a set up and tear down church? Hmm. I think one of the hardest things is probably like getting people on board with setting up and tearing down, like getting the volunteers to do it. And like simultaneously, I say simultaneously because it's not like volunteers are harder or supplies are harder. It's like one and the same, but like storing your stuff mm -hmm. is so hard. And especially with kids ministry because there's so much stuff <laughs> that kids need 
from babies to fifth graders, that it's just the widest range of stuff. And so I would say finding places to store stuff and then also like finding the volunteers to help you set it up and tear it down. Yeah. It's pretty hard. Yeah. That's, there's so much stuff. Okay. So tell us a little bit about, you had mentioned that you have a shared office with your staff. Yeah. And so kind of share a little bit about how you store your stuff. Like I know some stuff is behind this backdrop. Yeah. They have been able to store some stuff in their classrooms that they use on Sunday mornings, but kind of like share with me how you consolidate all the stuff and then how you kind of store it. So in terms of consolidation, I don't keep anything that I'm like, oh, we might use this one day. (laughs) Like, Sure. Um, Not to say I don't do that in my home, but for kids ministry, it's, I just keep the things that I know the kids love. Yeah. Um, And in our office, we have, it's actually really interesting, our office is like this old house on a valve making property in Westside Costa Mesa. (laughs) Um, So it's like on an uh, industrial property, it's this little house. Um, and we have, there's a couple offices in there, but we also have this, like, a couple closets that I use as storage for kids' ministry. Mm-hmm. And so I have, like, a craft shelf, and I have a toy shelf, and that's just what I keep it at. And yeah. if it doesn't fit on there, I figure out something to rotate it out with and donate it or get rid of it. Yep. Just get rid of it. Um And then in terms of, like, on Sundays, what we store in this space, behind here, there's a storage closet that has most of our, like, sound equipment for the larger gathering space, Mm -hmm. but there is one shelf that I use that has, we do one box that is our nursery box, a box that is our one- and two-year-old box, and I just keep, I, I make sure to keep it contained to that, and in the office space, I have a couple things that I'll rotate in and out, so, um the rattles get a little less squeaky. I have a couple rattles back in the office. I rotate it out. Um, And so trying to keep it um, as like streamlined as possible with like one box for each classroom. And then in our classrooms, there's these credenzas and I have a section that's books, a section that's crafts and a section that's toys. And again, just noticing, oh, they're getting bored with this. Let's rotate it out from something from the office yeah no no that's great when it comes to curriculum and content that you're teaching kids I know some curriculums can be really supply heavy Mm -hmm. and so how do you well first what curriculum do you guys utilize on Sunday mornings and then how do you take that and make it work for a church that maybe doesn't have the space for beach balls and hula hoops Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and paint and all this stuff that churches have an office space and set up classrooms all throughout the week can utilize. Yeah. It's funny that you ask that because (laughs) we actually found it really difficult years ago um, using Mm curriculums because we didn't have the ability to bring everything in that we needed. And so we were having to readjust and rewrite a lot of the curriculum. So I actually write our own curriculum. That's great. I... We use different storybook Bibles, and sometimes we'll have, like, a thematic theme for Mm -hmm. the season, and I'll pull different stories for that. I'm about to go into, like, a um, curriculum about the attributes of God, and so using different stories for that. But so it's a unique answer because I kind of tailor our curriculum to what I know we have um, and keep it really simple um, because I know the kids really well in our community and yep. I know they don't necessarily that's not what they're necessarily drawn to like simplicity if they yeah. can sit and talk with you they're super happy so yep. I found that we don't need a ton of that stuff yep. in our particular kids ministry that's awesome I love that you've taken your community and your context and really have been able to think through okay what do our families need what do they like what can we do to still make church fun for the kids but also remember that we don't need or desire to have 
all the extras and all the things and just i love that that's great all right you guys that is the end of our space tour here with erica at redemption in costa mesa california if you would like to learn more about kids ministry circle how to get involved how to join a cohort you can head over to kidsministrycircle.com we are also at kids ministry circle over on instagram and facebook and if you liked this video we would love for you to like and subscribe so that you will see more kids ministry circle videos in the near future. Thanks you guys, see you soon.